I'm really surprised that I have not made this video yet. We're going to talk about progress bars inside of Notion. In fact, whenever I think about this video, I always assume I already made it. So today I'm going to show you sort of the anatomy of this progress bar formula in its shortest and in my opinion, easiest way to write it. And I'm going to show you some of my favorite types of progress bars and my favorite designs to use as well as some interesting use cases. So two use cases we're going to talk about are the classic progress bar in reference to a book or bookshelf and book reading progress and another for finding the progress in a date range. So from today inside of a date range, what the progress is maybe to like a deadline. So yeah, let's just get right into this. So let's look at the final product I want to make. The first example is going to be of a book reading database. At the left hand side, we'll have the title of the books and then just a property for pages read and total pages. This is going to give us a percentage, of course, you know, read divided by total pages will give us that. And then we'll plug that percentage into this progress bar. So really all you need is a percentage in order to create a progress bar. And a progress bar can be used for more than just you know, a bookshelf or for goal progress, you can also use it for date ranges. So in this example, we're also going to create a date range progress between start and an end date. So inside of this date property, you can toggle end date, trigger a start date that you maybe want to start working on a project and an end date for a deadline. And what I want to see is where today lies within this date range and what percentage of the way is complete to the deadline. And in this case, it is 46%. So let's just get right into making this from scratch. Before we do, I want to show you these three symbols at the top left hand corner. So I grabbed these from a website called compart.com. Here you can search for different unique symbols. So if I were to look for arrows, for instance, I can find some arrows here that are more unique um, that don't show up in my emoji pop up menu. So I just grabbed these three symbols from there. So like I said, we just need a percentage to create a progress bar. And the first function you're going to want to know is the slice function. And inside of slice, inside of these parentheses, I'm going to put in a text value. And this is going to be the line of the progress bar. For right now, I'm just going to put in dashes from my keyboard and then later put in this custom dash to replace it when we're done. So I'm just gonna put 10 dashes. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and then comma space. And right here, I'm going to put in how many dashes I want to remove or slice away. So let's say I want to slice away 10. Well, that would slice away every dash. If I want to do nine, one would appear slice away eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and two, and one, or zero. So this is how this progress bar is going to move. But what I want to do is go comma again and put in 10. This is going to move the slider in the other direction. So if I were to go nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, it will move that way. So this is the direction I want to move this progress bar. So what we really want to do is just replace this 10 with this percentage we're getting from here. Let's exit out of here and just make another temporary formula. Here, I just want to find that percentage pretty simply. You're going to go prop or property, come down to property, read, and I'm going to divide this by total pages. And that will give us this percentage. If I were to click this one, two, three button and go to percent, it will give us 100%, 29%, 68, 97. What I want to do is make sure that these numbers range from zero to 10 so we can replace this 10 with it. So to do this, I'm just going to times this by 10. And now I have 10, two, six, and nine. From here, I'm just going to clean up these numbers with a round function. So there are three types of round functions. You have just regular round, you can wrap it around, or you can round it down or up. You can round it down with floor or round it up with seal. I'm going to use floor. And the reason I'm using floor 
is because I want to make sure whenever we have a 90% or over, that it isn't rounding up to 100. So we don't want to round up, I want to round down to 9. So now that I have this, actually I can just copy all this here and just replace the 10 with it. Now I see that these progress sliders are all different. If I were to change this 136, for instance, to 60, it would give me a 1, because it is about 10%. 300 is about 60%. And of course, 456 would give me 10 dashes. The next thing I'm gonna do is replace these dashes with my custom dash I got from that website. And I'm just gonna replace these with 10 of those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. This bigger. And then I'm gonna add an emoji to the end. I'm gonna add this triangle. And to do this, I'm gonna go plus and in quotes, put that triangle inside of it. Now, if I wanna put the percentage at the end, I can do something like this. Let's just go right inside of here. And instead of having 10, I'm gonna go 100. And that'll give us the percentage number. I wanna change this to text so we can add it inside of this progress bar. So to do that, I'm gonna format it with the format function and just wrap it around the entire formula. And then I'm going to add a percentage sign. Now what I can do is just copy all of this and at the end of here, just go plus and paste it in. And that should give us that percentage at the end. I do want to put a space between this emoji and the percentage. So within this triangle text value, I'm just going to put a space after. So that's just giving you a minimal classic progress bar. Let's turn this into a slider. So to do that, let's first actually copy and paste this formatting at the end. I just want to delete this. Just go up to that arrow and we can actually paste that down here just to keep it because I want to use it in the future. And what I want to do here is change this triangle to a circle. Get rid of that space. And now we're going to try to figure out how to put that line on the other side. And really what we're doing is just kind of going backward. What I do recommend with making a slider like this is actually to make this line longer. I'm going to make this 20 dashes. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it at the end. And then I'm going to change this 10 to 20. And if you want a longer progress bar, um, you can just replace this circle with that triangle. So what I'm gonna do is actually just copy this front bit with the line and add it to the end. So this is what it's gonna look like right now. So right over here next to that zero, what I'm gonna do is actually put 20 and then subtracting this bit here. And it should give us something like this. So just that added bit of formula, we're just copying and pasting this line in the front, adding it to the back and making sure that that number of dashes minus is before the percentage calculation. And now we have that. I mean, really all we have to do is put this format at the end. Of course, I wanna add a space. So I'm going to go add quotes and within these quotes, put a space in between and copy that in at the end. And that's really all it is. Let me go into this box and sort of pause here if you want to copy this. Of course, the formula is also down in the description to copy and paste. So let's go down to how that date range works. Like I said, we're just finding a percentage to plug in to this structure which is right here. So what I wanna find here is the total days between the start and today, and then I'm gonna divide it by the total days in this date range to find the percentage. So let's do another temporary formula to find that percentage. And to do that, we're gonna use the date between function. What I wanna do is find the date between now and the start of property date comma, and I want to find the days between. So this is the structure of the date between function. You have one date here, another date here, and what you want to find between them. So that's seven days between now and the start. And now I just want to divide this by the total range. So I'm going to do date between again, the end 
of property date and the start of property date. In days. So in here, just like up above, we're going to go 10 times this and then rounding it down with floor. And actually we can copy and paste some of these elements. So slice this line, zero comma. Let's put 10 in as a placeholder for now and copy this formula here, replace the 10. And I should have that slider. And let's see how that slider operates. So if I change the end date to today, it should give me 10 dashes. And if I change it to maybe the 30th, about 20% to the deadline. And it should be two dashes. But of course, we do have 20 dashes here. So I need to change 10 to 20. And that'll give us four dashes instead to make that line longer like we have here. The next thing I want to do is get that emoji, get that circle emoji and just add that and then copy and paste this front line, put it onto the back and make sure that this says 20 minus before the percentage. In the end, I can put that percentage in there. So I can format this to make it text. And instead of 10, put 100. And then add a percentage sign, 25%. Put that at the end of this. So plus, paste it in. And then add that space. So I really have to locate it here. We have plus format. That is the format of the percentage. I'm going to put right in between two quotes plus and then put a space between those quotes. There is one problem that needs to be solved here and that is if the date range is before today. So let's say the end date is on the 6th. I want to make sure that this entire slider stays at 100%. You can actually create another property over here for 10th to show you how I can add an if statement to the beginning of this. So let's just do a test date between the end of property date and now in days. Make sure that B is capital and it says negative four. So that is four days in the past. If I were to put the end date on today, it will give me zero. So I just wanna make sure that in this formula here that this is greater than negative one. So I only want this checkbox to be ticked if today is within a date range. If it is the ninth, it should be unchecked and we're good. So what I'm gonna put at the beginning of this slider is an if statement. I'm gonna copy this and make sure it says if, paste, if this is the case, then execute this entire body of formula we just made. If not the false condition at the end, just give me this line and then this circle at the end, space 100%. Close out that if statement. Now, even though that date range is in the past, it will stay at 100%. Now let's solve if the date range is in the future. So if the date range starts on the 11th and ends on the 28th, sorry, the 11th and ends on the 28th, it will say 0%. But if I go to the 12th, it will say negative seven. So what I wanna do is again, copy and paste this date between Put it in here and let's see what happens. Date between the start instead of the end. Looks like we're at one and at 13, two, 14 is three. Tomorrow would be zero and today would be zero. So right here is where we wanna start. So if we are greater than zero, it seems, I just want this to say zero. So greater than zero. 
We're going to put another if statement at the beginning here and say if paste that in if date between start and now is greater than zero days. I want the bar to look like this. Let's just copy this. Put the dot at the start. Space zero percent. Put a comma after this to separate the second if statement. And there are two if statements here. I'm going to put a second parenthesis to close out that second if statement. You can take a look at this and maybe pause the video if you need. And it should be good. Let's get rid of this temporary property and test this out. Let's say the start date is on the 1st and the end date is on the 9th. It will stay at 100%. And if the end date is on the 28th and the start is on the 12th, it should say 0 and remain that way. If you have any questions about this formula, um, if you have any questions about particular functions, let me know. I have a link to Discord down in the description if you want to ask me about a specific use case or a specific problem you're having or a specific way you want to use a progress bar and you need some help, I'm glad to help. And yeah, I will see you guys on Wednesday with a video about how I use shorthand with my digital notes. And then again on Sunday, I'll have a Notion video. And I'll see you the rest of the week on Twitter. I'll see you then.